Hail the Arch Villains, welcome to Arch City Comics. I'm Adam AF. Remember to please like, share, subscribe, and ring that bell for notifications so you can stay up to date on all things Arch City. So the last couple lettering videos that I uploaded were quick time lapse videos showing me lettering some pages. This time I wanted to do an actual tutorial uh, using Medibang Paint Pro because this is a really powerful and free tool that you can use uh, for lettering your comic books or manga. Now it's definitely set up for manga uh, but it's easily uh, adjustable to to use for comic books. It's just they've got a lot of preset items in here. If you click this little little speech bubble go to items uh, They've got thought bubbles, uh, some yelling, graphics, dialogue, different shapes and stuff like that. Um, I used a lot of these on More Lethal because it's kind of got that, that manga feel to it. So I wanted to, to keep that going with the lettering. So uh, first thing that I always do is I come over here and I'll add in two extra layers. And uh, I'll show you why here in a second y2 um, <clears throat> so we'll go back to layer one I'm gonna bring the opacity down to about 50 50 60 percent so you can you can kinda see this is gonna help when we lay the letters down uh, to actually see where they're going you know putting black letters on these dark backgrounds you can really lose what you're doing it makes it kinda hard to keep track so uh, let's see we're gonna pull up the script here and thank you to Edwin Acevedo for letting me use the ace. Uh, so here we've got panel one. All right. A lot, a lot of times I'll just, we can just do, if it wants to select here. Maybe. Come on. A lot of times I'll just, um, if I can open these in the actual document. I'll do that and then it makes this a little bit easier. For some reason it does not want to select. There we go. Alright, so we're just going to copy the dialogue. And so then we'll come down here. This little T, T is for text. It's going to open up the text tool. Maybe. Yeah, here we go. Okay. Um, so then you get like the little, that little eye bar thing. <clears throat> uh, so let's see, we're gonna, let's start by placing it right here. So this is gonna open up the text as soon as you click. Um, now here's where things get really fun. They do have <clears throat> a bunch of fonts loaded onto the Medibang Cloud, uh, which is honestly is my go-to I do have my own fonts that I've downloaded and stuff but you can either choose to use the cloud text rendering or if you unclick that that's going to load up all of whatever fonts that you have loaded onto your computer um, so we're gonna stick with the cloud text for now um, we've got a font here heavy data which is the one that we are going to use for the ace when he is in his armor. Uh, so we're going to do, he's going to have white text come in here and we will paste the dialogue. There we want to make sure that you've got your center text on. You can also choose bold, italic, you know, change the colors around, change the size. We're going to up that to 96. Uh, no, we're going to do, we're going to do the full 128 so we can really read it. Uh, so I'm going to actually add in a comma here and take that space away, hit enter, there we go. Now we've got something that actually looks like some comic book text here. Uh, so once you've got that, if you still got the text on, you can, you can move it around, replace it. Uh, we're going to leave it right here for right now. And then let's see, we'll switch back over to the here. This is mom's dialogue for panel two. 
this does not like to select on here. All right. So we'll copy that. And then flip back over. So for her text, uh, we're going to switch back to the regular old, what they call on here, wild words, which is just their, just the generic uh, comic booky manga font. So we'll paste her dialogue in there. Switch the text color back to black because she's just going to have regular text. I'm also going to make it a little bit smaller because of the size difference. Uh, all right, so let's see. We'll put the space in here. And who the hell are you and what did you do to my son? That looks pretty good. Actually, let's switch this around here. I'm very, and I mean most letters should be very anal about placements and what these look like. That's better. You want it to fit really well into the dialog box. So if you got three lines like this, you want to do, uh, you know, short, long, short, so it fits in that oval. Uh, we'll leave that there for now. All right, going down to panel three. Uh, let's see. All right, so he's got two lines of response here. So we'll go ahead and copy again. Please copy. Like I said, because this is not uh, the actual document, this is just like the, the PDF version, it does not like to highlight. Uh, so we'll copy line one, come back over here. So this is gonna be two separate bubbles. And since, he, since he's taken his mask off in this scene, we're gonna leave the, the regular font like like the mom. <laughs> so move that up for now. There it goes. So we'll kind of lock that in a little closer. That looks pretty good for now. We can always go back and I'll, sh I'll show this to Ace for final approval to make sure that uh, everything looks right and he's, he's happy with it. So we're going to go back and select layer three. So when you do the text on this, each text line comes in as its own layer. So we're going to go back to layer three, which is where we're going to do our the text boxes and such. So for the Ace's dialogue, uh, I have actually made his own dialogue box somewhere here it is H ace speech so we're gonna pull that out we're gonna drop it right where we want to oh and for some reason it's in front of the dialogue no matter we just pull the layers down Go ahead and pull layer two down below that as well because we're going to need it there. Uh, so back to layer three. Then we can shrink this down, get this to fit right over the dialogue. Ace likes, Ace likes it nice and tight. 
All right, so that'll do there. Um, so for the other, for the regular dialogue, we're just going to we're just going to do normal, normal speech bubbles. There's a couple different ways to do this. Like I said, you can you can use their uploaded ones here. Uh, let's see where would be a good one. So n none of the ones uploaded uh, from the cloud have. Uh, they're not smooth. They're all kind of kind of wonky. Kind of moved a little bit. So I'll show you what I mean here. We'll pull this out here. But then you can always just see. It shrink down. Move it around. That. But since every other page I've done by drawing our own, that's what we're going to do. There's also two different ways to do this. You can either come here to this uh, this circle and you can draw it in this way. Uh, let me make, hopefully this has got about the right that's about the right thickness I think. That looks good. Um, or the other way is to come down to the select tool, uh, change it to an ellipse. Like that you can move that around a little bit. Oop, moved around too much. Um, then from here, if you go to select and draw selection selection border or control B, you can get the exact same effect. You can choose here on boundary, inside or outside. Uh, change your pixel thickness so we'll do that boom and then deselect boom look at that we've also got a, uh, a nice box that way now if you don't want the you know the the actual circle the smoothness of it you can change that as well uh, you stick on stay with select here uh, select and then go to come over here to train you, you can either use transform or mesh transform uh, we're going to do mesh transform so I can really show you what I mean here zoom in a bit <clears throat> so here you can actually uh, you can actually pull and move these around a bit uh, so it kind of tightens up tightens up the dialogue Oop, too much that's spinning I don't want to spin it And that'll get you a, a nice, a nice bubble that's not so uniform. If you want more of like a hand drawn, but you want to do it the fast way, you don't want to actually uh, make it look perfect. Uh, we're gonna stick with the pretty, uh, we're gonna go pretty, pretty basic here. You can also do it this way, transform. If you do free transform, uh, you can kind of, if you see here, move, change things that way. And you can use this for text as well, uh, which I'll show you in a second. So let's, uh, so let's sharpen this up a bit. That looks pretty good. Okay. So then we'll deselect, come down to David's text as well. Uh, we're going to do the same thing. I'm going to use the free, the actual, uh, the circle here. To reset your, th these are all the different ones you can use here. You can use concentric circles. Um, this gives you a nice perspective point, uh, lines, curve lines. Uh, so we'll stick with the circle. If you need to reset anything, you just click this little this little sprocket down here. That's the reset button. So I'm going to go in here. Draw that one in and bring it down. Wider. All 
right, so it's actually a little on the low side. So we can actually, we're going to move this up here, draw in the circle, and then come over here and find the you're in danger. And we can lock this up a little bit better there. And then if you, we're going to take these out so you can see a little bit better. Get your eraser tool. Oh, make sure you're on the correct layer. And get rid of these lines. That's a tiny eraser. There we go. Now we're cooking. All right. And add the dialog back in. We'll pull out a little bit. <laughs> pull out. All right, we're going to move the mom. Oh, wrong mom. Mom, you got to get out of here. You got to get out of here, mom. I'm going to bring it in a little bit. Um, come back to layer three so we can move. Oh, since, okay, so I haven't rasterized this yet, so it's not, it's still movable. Um, so we can go, we're on the layer. Oop, let's move the whole, everything. We need... Sometimes it gets stuck, and I have yet to figure out a way to unstuck it, except for doing this, bringing a new one on, deleting it, and then now I can I can move this around. I'm not sure. There might be a way. Oops, wrong button. There might be a way, but uh, I haven't figured that one out yet. Put this back on since I accidentally deleted it. Okay, shrink it up. There we go. Okay. So I can close that box. Because um, oh, I moved everything moved a little bit. Move this up just a hair. There we go. Okay. So, now everything's pretty much in place. We're going to go, we're going to take the dialogue out. And just go ahead and remove it all. But we're going to fill in our boxes here. Actually, before we do that, we're going to add in our tails. Sorry. Okay. So, a couple different ways to do tails as well. Um, you can use the the freeform curve line here and just kind of bring that down curvy line uh, if you do it this way the best way to get a good line out of it is to take layer one out for some reason sometimes it gets caught and makes things look kind of goofy so you can do it that way or Leave that in there. Oops, too many times. Um, you can use select once again. Go to select, come down here to do polygon, and then this way you can actually do uh, more of sharp lines. So boom, boom, double click to make it complete. Draw selection border, control B, on boundary, pixels, OK, deselect. And there, you got yourself a dialogue tail. I'm not happy with that angle. We're going to redo that. So I'll use a mixture of both depending on, on what's what's going on, what the dialogue is exactly. Sometimes, sometimes the panel itself uh, requires more of a curved line. Sometimes you can just do it this way. I like to just kind of do it this way. I like the sharper tails most of the time. And then, like I said, Ace still gets final say over everything. So, and come back in, get these extra, extra line out of the way. Boom. And then same thing down here with Ace. Hmm. 
yeah we'll do the sharp we'll do the select tool again and then double click to close it select draw selection border boundary boom <clears throat> and then deselect is control D once again we'll erase the excess line that we don't need all right so now we've got our bubbles ready oh we still need to do this one what am I doing here some tutorial this is huh okay so to match the color I don't know if I've actually got it saved in my custom colors or not but you got this lovely little dropper tool that pretty much everything always has you just suck up that color and we're gonna do the same thing we're gonna take our select tool that looks pretty good alright uh, draw selection border boom deselect I'm not happy I don't like that for some reason that doesn't look right to me I'll undo that hmm bring it sharper off the corner that looks better I think okay alright so now we can start filling in this stuff so to get this down so we can mess with it you're gonna come over to layer uh, rasterize material and then that's gonna rasterize our little bubble box there so now for the colors we're gonna come down to layer 2 we're going to remove layer 1 for the time being and let's see we'll switch we'll keep that color we'll switch over make it white use our fill tool boom boom add that back in uh, let's see and the ace let's go over to here suck up that color uh, take that layer back out like that oh, we got that line in here get rid of that line switch up to layer 3 because that's the layer that the dialog bubble this dialog bubble is on took a little too much off the top like a haircut there we go alright so then we can add back all the dialog mm-hmm looks good turn our layer back up zoom out take a peek here oh we are missing something we need the sound effect that happens when he presses the button turns the suit off and on does this kinda Iron Man thing so we'll go back to layer 3 now I have some cut I've done custom uh, sound effects for for all of this stuff this one in particular the ace effect is the sound it makes when his suit turns off and on so close out there That looks pretty good there, I think. All right, once again, we're going to layer, rasterize material. Boom, now it's locked in. Now I can actually go take the select tool, move back to rectangle, and reselect this. Uh, we'll come back over to Control T, does the transform. 
now we can you know, mess with it you know, make it a little bit bigger on one end move it hmm. I don't know about that seems like a little much There we go. That looks pretty good. Like I said, Ace gets final say off on all of this. If I need to tweak anything, he'll let me know. But that's basically the short of it. That is how you letter a comic book page with Medibang Paint Pro. Um, like I said, it's pretty powerful very intuitive um, now from here obviously you know we'll save the work I always save one as a Medibang file uh, so I can come back in and edit it uh, and then come over here to export you can export the file to uh, basically JPEG PNG anything you want and it when you export it it shows it's whatever you have on screen that's how it's going to export so if you are absent-minded and you've got the layer turned down so you can see and you export it that's exactly what it's going to look like um, so keep that in mind because I've made that mistake already but that's uh, that's pretty much it uh, I hope you enjoyed this video like I said make sure you subscribe bring that bell for notifications and uh, sign up for the ACE mailing list. I've got the link for that in the description. Uh, you're going to want to do it. This is going to be just a lot of fun. Good superhero comic book that the world needs right now. So, thank you once again. I'll see you next time.